Hey there again, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. Um, I hope you've liked the, um, the videos that I've put out. Um, I've put a fair amount of time into them, and I hope you like the content. Um, um, I've been trying to watch uh, some of the NHL playoffs. It's not really all that interesting anymore now that, you know, the Leafs are out. And, you know, the the teams that you would expect to get eliminated, like Montreal and Columbus and all, all these other teams are are on their way out. So, it's, um, the NHL playoffs haven't been as fun as I would hoped. But, you know, I'm still following along. Um, I have the bracket, I have submitted my brackets online, so I'm... I'm hoping my picks come out right. I did fairly well in the preliminary rounds. So other than Toronto, uh, that's the only pick that I got wrong against Columbus. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but the Leafs are out. And unlike the previous summers where the media in this town has had plenty to write about when it comes to contracts they haven't really spent too much time on creating you know these ridiculous rumors and uh with sports not having cleaned house a while back with nick kiprios and doug McLean and all these guys gone um it's really lowered the amount of rumor mongering in, in toronto and um there's no contract situation to talk about this year. Um, the Leafs have everyone up front um, signed, and they got you know Muzzin, Hall, and Riley signed on the back end, and they have Anderson and Campbell in net. So there really isn't much to talk about in terms of contracts. Uh, you can talk about Mikheyev and Dermot and all these things, but these are all like you know fringe around around the just nibbling around the fringe um you know small moves that that's going to augment the team's bottom six and i think that's really what they're going to focus on this year they're going to focus on augmenting the bottom six and their bottom 3d um there's going to be for sure there's going to be trades and um you know cheap veteran signings uh, to fill out the defense um, for the Leafs. Uh, they have their top three guys. Like I said, Riley, Muzzin, and Hall, and Muzzin and Hall being their top shutdown pair. So um, I really don't think the Leafs are going to go big game hunting unless something opens up and they, and they can um, uh, maybe acquire a HOSA contract from Arizona, which is you know a $5.5 million contract to go with the 4.5 they have in cap space roughly the uh, this off season so you know if they could do something like that and increase their cap space to 10 million um you i could see them going after a big name d but i don't think they're gonna do that unless they move out a guy like riley in his final year and they don't they're not looking to pay him seven to eight million long term uh i could see that um, them going after a big name and I think you know really in terms of big names there's only just one and that's Alex Petrangelo so um, I don't know if uh, John Tavares is the kind of guy that can convince him to come here for cheaper maybe instead of 8 million he takes less he takes 7 million 6.5 on a 7 year deal I mean anything's possible really but um, the Leafs have 4, $4.5 million to work with and um I think they're going to augment their bottom six. And I think that's going to come uh, through trades. Um, Janssen and Kapanen, I think, are pretty much done in Toronto. Um, the Leafs have a lot of guys waiting in the wings. Like Barabanov that, that they just signed. Um, they have Korshkov. They have Ingvall. They have Adam Brooks. They have Nick Robertson. Um, all these guys can play in the bottom six. And Nick Robertson being a really good fit um, on the on the third line left wing, like we saw him in the playoffs with uh, Kerfoot and Kapanen. But if it's not Kapanen, if it's Barabanov, if it's Korshkov, 
there's a lot of potential there. So I think that the Leafs can um, really utilize the assets that they have, and they are assets. Anybody out there who starts spewing nonsense, especially in the media from TSN and, and you know, saying Janssen is not an asset, you can't get nothing for him, you can't get nothing for Kapanen, blah, 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 blah. These are the same guys, if you look at the last number of seasons. I mean, the Leafs drafted Matthews first overall, and then they made the playoffs, and it was, well, the young team overachieved. They lost to a contender in Washington. Every game was pretty much an overtime game. It was close. That series could have gone either way with a couple of lucky bounces. So, But they overachieved. They overachieved. And then they made the playoffs the following year. They went seven games with Boston. Another cup contender. You go seven games. It's a learning year. The cup window is now open. TSM Sportsnet. The cup window is open. The Leafs have no backup goaltender and their defense sucks. But the cup window is open. So they make the playoffs again. They end up playing Boston first round. They're up 3-2 in the series. They end up losing in seven games. Then it's, why can't they get out of the first round? Another media narrative driven by utter nonsense. They're not losing. This young team is not losing because they don't have talent or they're not playing the right system. Uh, you would like them to play a little bit more of a de defensive system, but they don't have the defensemen to pull that off. They have a bunch of offensive guys, so they play the way that they play. And when they lose to cup contenders like Washington and Boston, um, it's possible for two good teams to play a good, hard-fought seven-game series, and eventually somebody has to lose. It's just the way it works. It's seven games, somebody has to lose, somebody has to win. Now... If Boston would have lost to the Leafs two years in a row, do you think Boston would have? Do you think Boston would have did, did blew it up, gone for the rebuild? You know, Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak. They got Tuukka Ras. They got Halak. They got Tory Krug. They got all these great players. What do you think the narrative in, in Boston would have been? Okay, we lost to a good young team. It was hard fought. It's okay, but in Toronto, it's doom and gloom all the time. I mean, it, it's. Everything in Toronto is this made-up narrative all the time. Look at last year. Darren Dreger and Bob McKenzie spewed four months, almost a year, unprecedented RFA season, unprecedented RFA summer, unprecedented RFA this, unprecedented RFA that. RFA is going to break some records. RFA is going to do this. RFA is going to do that. What happened? Bob McKenzie and Darren Dreger. What happened? What happened to the unprecedented RFA season? Braden point signs for three years and 6.75 million. Kyle Connor got seven years at 7.142857. Miko Rantanen signs for six years at 9.25. Patrick Liney got 6.75. Kachuk, Matthew Kachuk in Calgary got 7 for 3. Charlie McAvoy got 4.9 million for 3. But guess what? Mitch Marner got paid. Unprecedented RFA summer. Mitch Marner got paid 6 years, 10.893. And you know what Bob McKenzie says when he comes on t national TV? No. This is, this is in the summer of unprecedented RFA. The, the Mitch Marner contract is really an outlier. Excuse me? You just said all the RFAs are going to break records. N S Mitch Marner is an outlier? And then Miko Rantanen comes out before he signed his contract and said, I see Mitch Marner as a compare. compare uh, Bob McKenzie says... Miko Rantanen sees Mitch Marner as his comparison in contract talks. Miko Rantanen signed for 9.25, which is 
I was yelling from every single social media platform in the world, Mitch Marner can't get more than 9 million flat. I got blasted from anybody and everybody. And then Bob McKenzie says, yeah, Miko Ranton and uh, Miko Ranton and what he really meant by Mitch Marner is my comparison is it's my place on the team. Um, that's where my comparison is. We have Nathan McKinnon, who's definitely better than me. Austin Matthews is better than Marner, but that's what I really meant. Bob McKenzie clarifies because Bob McKenzie really knows what Miko Ranton is thinking. So, so Bob McKenzie comes out and says, Miko Ranton and thinks Mitch Marner is his comparison. Mitch, and he signed for 9.25. And then after Mitch signed, he goes, well, what he really meant was it's his place on the team is what he was really comparing. So that's Bob McKenzie and Darren Dreger bullshitting on national television and radio. None of you fans catch it. Unprecedented RFA season. So all, all it is in Toronto is made up narratives, made up stuff. Go, go Google Cody Franzen for Maple Leaf Captain and you'll see two articles, one by Michael Trakos and one by, um, um, I forgot her name, Rosie something. They both wrote an article when Cody Franzen was here that he should be the next captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Cody Franzen, the next captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. The following season, he was gone, and now this guy, it, and then he disappeared. He sucked so bad. But this is these are the people covering the team. They have no clue what they're talking about. But guess what? Nick Kiprios has a podcast now on YouTube. He posted on YouTube. And um, the amazing rumors are back. Nick Kiprios. The Leafs are going to trade Frederick Anderson to Pittsburgh for Matt Murray. So Matt Murray's contract is up. He's an RFA. And he's his contract was uh, $3.75 million, I believe. So you're telling me that Pittsburgh, who has Jari, who's a really good goalie, a cheap goalie, and they can go out into the UFA market and sign another veteran cheap guy, a team that's really close to the cap in Pittsburgh, they're going to trade for a goalie that makes $2 million more than Matt Murray. Is that what you're telling me? I don't know where these guys make this stuff up. Like, I don't know where they get it. It doesn't make any sense what you're saying. Like, but the Leafs supposedly, they suck really bad. You need to change up the core. They can't win with these guys. They said that in Toronto. They said that about Phil Kessel. Steen, Bozak, all these guys. Steen left, won a cup in St. Louis. Bozak left, won a cup in St. Louis. Phil Kessel left, won two cups in Pittsburgh. Come on, man. Enough with the bullshit in Toronto. You fans... You're one of the most knowledgeable fan bases in Toronto. You've seen this bullshit for years. They did it to Larry Murphy. They did it to a lot of people. Look how excited this, these people in Toronto, the same people who say the Leafs suck and their cup windows closed, never really open, to be honest with you, were so excited when David Clarkson signed in Toronto that they put him on the cover of the Toronto Sun. Wendell Clarkson. They compared him to Wendell Clark. How big of a loser did this guy turn out to be in Toronto? 
The Toronto Sun loved him. The Star loved him. The TSN Sportsnet. It was... It was... Material. It's content. It's content. And so they love it. And David Clarkson turned out to be a giant loser. He's not what the Leafs needed. Who pays a who pays a grinder who scores twenty goals a season, max? Now I know he had a he he had a couple of good seasons, but overall, if you if if you average it all out, the guy's a grinding bottom six, heart and soul twenty goal guy. It's fine you can have guys like that, but to pay him as much as we did and to have to trade that contract and give up assets. But they loved it in Toronto. All the media outlets that say the Leafs suck right now and they need that. And, but, you know, now David Clarkson is a joke. And who makes the jokes? TSN, Sportsnet, all the, uh, the newspaper columnists. When they need a joke, David Clarkson is that guy. Go back. And call them on it every time they call, every time they make the David Clarkson joke and say, "Hey, remember you wrote this article and you said this guy's the the next next coming of Jesus." But that's Toronto. We lose a series, blow it up. Everybody sucks. Matthews is a loser. He's only been in the NHL four years and has been in the running for the Maurice Rocket Richard twice. His rookie year, where he lost out by four goals to Sidney Crosby and won the. Mo Imagine if he would have won the. Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy and the Calder that year, and then he missed out on the he missed out on the Richard Trophy by one goal this year because the season ended prematurely, and it is what it is. But everybody sucks. There's no leadership. Hey, Pittsburgh just lost to Montreal, pretty handily. Is does Pittsburgh lack leadership? Is Sidney Crosby the guy who has no leadership? He can't lead his team? Or was this one of those unprecedented seasons where, you know, four months off, it's hard for some guys to rev it back up and to get into that mode again? Washington almost got swept by the New York Islanders. Do they lack leadership? T.J. Oshie, Nicholas Backstrom, Alexander Ovechkin, all those guys. Is that what Washington lacks? Leadership? Because they almost got smoked by the New York Islanders? So now the Islanders have all this leadership from nowhere. They didn't add anybody. But now New York Islanders have leadership and Pittsburgh and Washington don't. Is that what you're saying? That's why they're losing, right? Because they have no leadership. You're saying that's why the Leafs lost. No, the Leafs lost because they didn't execute. They didn't play well. Their shooting percentage, five on five, was 1.9 or something like that. It's, it's, it's an astronomically, historically impossible number. What had to go wrong for that shooting percentage to show up five on five? It's impossible. And if you saw the games, you noticed Tavares empty net hits the post. Mikheyev tips the puck, goes off the crossbar. Matthews is hitting the post, coming down the wing. He risks it right by the goal. He hit the post. That's fine. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. But to say no leadership, you got to blow it up. These guys are losers. You know, trade everybody, fire everybody. The Leafs didn't get rid of their coaches because of what happened this season. Paul McFarlane was supposed to leave for the OHL. They announced it in the middle of the season he was supposed to leave. So this is an opportunity for them to go out. And now, you know, there's a, there's the rumors uh, about Bruce Boudreau uh, maybe coming to the Leafs. You know, he's, he's, he's not a... a a great coach that's accomplished a lot in his career, but in a very specific role, whether it's um, managing the defense, whether it's managing the penalty kill, whatever it is, in, a, in, in the right role, he could be a great asset to the Leafs. 
But overall, bringing in Bruce Boudreaux is a disaster. But the media in Toronto loves that idea because you know what? Game one of the season, whenever it is next year, December 1st, whatever it is. Game one, the Leafs lose and they lose bad. The first article you're going to see is maybe the right guy to coach the Leafs is already behind the bench. You don't want that in Toronto. These guys are dying for Boost Brudro to be behind the bench. A defensive coach who only thinks defensive minded, who coaches not to lose and doesn't coach to win. I he's he's a good coach in a specific role and I get all that I personally wouldn't hire him in Toronto because I know the media and I know the stupidity level of of the people who write the articles and talk on TV and Bruce Boudreaux would just be it's just it's the perfect storm to talk about firing another coach you got to give Keith at least one full season. Now, if you sign Bruce Boudreaux to a two-year contract or something like that, and Keith really sucks the next year, and the Leafs don't improve defensively, then yes, all these rumors are going to start. And if Bruce Boudreaux is here and he's behind the bench, then he then the articles start even more about Bruce Boudreaux replacing. Um, Sheldon Keefe, and it's not fair to the guy. It, you can't work in this kind of environment. You can't be looking over your shoulder with every decision you make. You got If you're going to give the man a chance, give him the chance, give him free reign, and just let him do what he needs to do. Don't make him look over his shoulder. Don't add all these things to the equation. I mean... Dubis is a young GM and he took over the Leafs and with the amount of chatter online from the fans and everything like that and you know the uh, Leafs nation is highly emotional and they they sway one way or the other really quickly and you know you see it online if it's a great win the Leafs are amazing if they if they lose, especially, you know, some, you know, one crazy thing that, that's never happened in 100 years happens and the Leafs lose to a third string goalie, regardless of who he is. It's it's a joke for the next 3000 years. But it's but it's Toronto and this young GM is trying to work in this environment where Bob McKenzie, Darren Dreger, Nick Kiprios are literally pulling rumors out of their ass. Unprecedented RFA season. Where was it? All I heard for one year was these guys are so young and they're so talented and they're going to get crazy money. Charlie McAvoy got $4.9 million. Tori Krug signed. Kachuk signed. Line A signed. Line A. 40 goal seasons, the guy got 6.75. Marner can't score 20 goals to save his life. And God forbid you should ever bring up Marner's first two years of his entry-level contract because nobody wants to hear 61 and 69 points and 19 and 22 goals. Nope, none of that matters. He got 26 goals and 94 points. He's a superstar. Let's give him superstar money. No playmaker in the history of the NHL has ever been paid more than 9.25. No playmaker in the history of the game. So you're telling me that Marner is the greatest of all time? Greater than Gretzky? Anyways. So, Nick Kiprios is back. And his Frederick Anderson to Pittsburgh rumors are... are um, live and kicking and Leaf fans um, are really um, really getting behind that one because I don't know what they think about Anderson uh, I don't blame anything on Frederick Anderson I think he's a great goalie um, 
you know, he's really spoiled this fan base in terms of the moment he showed up, he solidified the Leafs. Soon as he showed up, the Leafs became a playoff team. And even regardless of how bad their defenses has been, defense has been over the last two, three, four years, the moment he showed up, everything got solidified and they became a good team. Leaf fans, I, I don't know what happened to your memory, but do you not remember what it was like before Frederick Anderson showed up? It was a disaster in Toronto. It's hard to find a number one goalie that can do what he does. The guy puts up decent stats behind a Swiss cheese defense. It's how much more can you want from the guy? The guy, he dives, he makes saves, he makes the most acrobatic saves, but he, he, you can't do this every single night. You need the team to put a better defense in front of him and play a little bit of a better defensive structure. And that's the coach's job to implement that, but you can't put it on the goalie. You know, like Carey Price's numbers in Montreal have not been great over the last couple of years. But are you going to say Carey Price is a horrible goaltender? No. The guy can't do that. He, he can't be a superstar every single night. You know, it, get, it wears on you mentally, physically. The Leafs need to hold on to Frederick Anderson. They need to pay him. But Luke Fox of, Luke Fox of Sportsnet writes the Toronto Maple Leafs goaltender Frederick Anderson has a year left on his deal at 5 million cap hit. There may not be a big upgrade on the free agent market, which there isn't. Jacob Markstrom could resign in, in Vancouver. Brayden Holtby, Corey Crawford appear to be on the downturn. And Robin Leonard is the top UFA goalie, but he wouldn't come cheap. Are you telling me that you would rather sign a 30-year-old goalie who has two good seasons under his belt to more money than to would you would rather sign Frederick Anderson? Or you want Cam Talbot instead? Cam Talbot, Robin Leonard, Corey Crawford, Brayton Holby, these are all old goalies who are not doing great things right now. You stick with you stick with who you know. Minnesota Wild and the New York Rangers and Pittsburgh Penguins all have goaltenders available for trade. Really? Is Pittsburgh going to trade away Tristan Jari? No. But Luke Fox and Nick Kiprios are talking about Frederick Anderson and they're talking about um, Freddie Anderson moving. Dan Kingerski, Kingerski of Pittsburgh Hockey Now writes, Pittsburgh Penguins GM Jim Rutherford needs to figure out his goaltending situation for the next season and it appears that Tristan Jari will get a new contract and that Matt Murray will be moved. Now he is an RFA. They do own his rights. They will qualify him and I'm sure they're going to try to trade his rights. I, I don't know how much it's worth. Um... His resume isn't great. He's got two cups on the back of Marc-Andre Fleury. So I don't want him in Toronto. I don't want Matt Murray in Toronto. He sh he's shit the bed ever since Marc-Andre Fleury left. He continues uh, with the free agent market for goaltenders. Could include Brayton Holby, Leonard, and Crawford, and Markstrom. The Vegas Golden Knights could put Marc-Andre Fleury back on the trade block if they re-sign Leonard. And the New York Rangers may also be looking to move a goalie. Now, me personally, the only way I would move Frederick Anderson or, or change, make a change in net is if I can get a guy like Marc-Andre Fleury. The guy, regardless of his age, the guy is an amazing goalie. He will always be an amazing goalie. He's always worth his money. And the guy writes... Uh, Murray's trade value has decreased this season as he posted an 899 save percentage, though he did not have a good second half of the regular season. Given the flooded goalie market this offseason, the trade value for Murray could be a second round pick and a prospect. So you're looking at a second round pick and a B prospect, ad max. Could the Penguins find a team that is interested in Murray, but also in Jack Johnson with three years left at 3.25, or Nick Bukestad? 
who has one year and $4.1 million left. So he's writing, they could trade Matt Murray, but you know, you know, take on this contract and we'll sweeten the pot a little bit. Pittsburgh's in trouble. They made a huge mistake. They should have traded Jari. I mean, they should have traded Matt Murray and held on to Marc-Andre Fleury. And they would have been perennial Stanley Cup favorites. Um, Another rumor. In Edmonton. There's been talk that the Edmonton Oilers, so this is from David David Staples of the Edmonton Journal. He writes that the Edmonton Oilers should be looking to trade Oscar Clefbaum, Darnell Nurse, or Adam Larson this offseason. Doesn't think that they should trade any doesn't think that they should trade any of those three, but they should look to move Chris Russell. Brian Burke was on Bob Stouffer's radio show and said that they're Defense needs an upgrade or a change that a couple of guys could use a change of scenery. Stouffer also asked about Larson, Nurse, and Clefbaum. And the quote says, any one of the three above, I like them all, so I'm not picking on them. I think Darnell Nurse gives a component that really makes their team different. I think in terms of mobility and hostility, but yes, something, but something. It's hard to make trades when you're in cap trouble, but it might be time for a change of scenery. Stouffer brings up Adam Larson to the Toronto Maple Leafs for winger Kasperi Kapanen or Janssen. And Burke responded with, those might be fits. Those are good. Those, those guys are both good players that you mentioned from Toronto. I think Larson is a really good player. He didn't have a great season, but I think he's always good as a shutdown guy now yeah, yeah i mean at this point adam larson is isn't isn't um you know the prime target for the leafs uh, but there was a time where toronto and edmonton had a deal done for connor brown and they were going to get um Jujar Kara and um, someone else, I forget, a defenseman. And that deal fell through because uh, the player got injured. Um, uh, Matt Benning, that's right. Jujar Kara and Matt Benning. The Leafs were going to get two players for Connor Brown, who was signed at 2.2 or 2.1 million. And I think Kasperi Kapanen or Janssen, if, if you could trade a Janssen, because the Leafs now with Nick Robertson and Barabanov and Mikheyev have three good left wingers. If you could trade Janssen for Adam Larson straight up, or maybe they add a third or a fourth or something like that, um, that wouldn't be a bad deal. Adam Larson in a lesser role, maybe just playing beside Morgan Riley, Morgan Riley being the offensive guy, the puck mover, and Adam Larson is more of a stay-at-home defenseman. He could thrive in that role. But, you know, you would have to scout, you know, scour the NHL and see what the value for Kapanen and Janssen is. I think they have, they have real good value. Kapanen and Janssen have both shown that they can play with guys like Tavares and Matthews and put the puck in the net. Um, in, in a place like Edmonton where they really could use wingers and not have to keep putting Drysaddle and McDavid together. I, I think, you know, guys like Kasp Kasperi Kapanen and Janssen, um, they're really good fits over there. Because, you know, Leaf fans know how fast the, these guys can skate and they can't play make with speed. And um, both uh, Dreisaitl and McDavid are, are high flyers. So those are definitely good fits, but you never know. Maybe there's something better out there, but that's not a bad deal. 
Brian Lawton was talking to Bob Stouffer as well about the Oilers' defense. Lawton would be concerned about Clef Baum's injury history. He's well thought of around the league, but you know he's on a friendly deal, but he does have his injury problems. Mark Spector of Sportsnet expects that Clef Baum, Nurse, and Ethan Bear will be back with the Oilers, and that trading Nurse would be a bold move. Specter thinks that the Oilers will trade Larson and the asking price will be high as there are plenty of teams who need a player like him, like the Toronto Maple Leafs. So over the years of uh, being a Leaf fan, you definitely notice Leafs get thrown in there and then the price goes up for a guy, but he never comes to Toronto. He doesn't, he, don't believe those rumors because they're just using the Leafs to raise the price. It is what it is. Spectre thinks the Oilers need to move, move need more defen defensive defensemen, and Stouffer thinks that they need more puck moving defensemen. So there is, there is um, the conflicting uh, ideologies there. For sure, Edmonton doesn't need more offensive defensemen. They can score, but like we saw in the preliminary round, Edmonton was scoring four, five, six goals, could not stop the puck from getting into their net. Um, so Spectre thinks that they need more def defensive defensemen. And there's a lot of guys out there, like a Radko Gudis is an expensive. There's a bunch of guys, you know, that are veteran defensive defensemen that are cheap. You can go out there and get um, Luke Fox of Sportsnet was talking about Spezza and his pending un unrestricted free agency. See, I love Spezza, and obviously being a hometown boy, you want him to have success here, and you want the Leafs to do well, and you want him to be a part of it, and you want him to experience that. As a fan, I think about the positives, and I love it. But he, you can't complain about the fourth line being soft or the Leafs being soft, and then put Spezza on the fourth line. So there's two conflicting ideas there, thoughts there. Um, if you complain about grit and toughness and all these things, you cannot sign Spezza and put him on the fourth line. So something has to give. Either um, either Spezza gets signed to the league minimum and maybe, I don't know, he plays on the third line in a more offensive role. I can see that. You, can do, you have to put him in an offensive role or in on the second power play and things like that. To put him as a penalty killer or on the fourth line, you're misusing him. He shouldn't be forced to fight in the playoffs to get this team going. The guy is, I don't know, 30-something years old. He has four daughters at home. You, sh you shouldn't put him in that situation. The Leafs need to go get guys that can play the role on the fourth line. Now they got Clifford, which is good. They have Adam Brooks and they have Gauthier. And that fourth line can be um, flipped to be more uh, more of a grinding, rugged fourth line. But you can't do it with Spezza there. So it's hard. Leafs have four and a half million in cap space if they don't make any moves. And to spend seven hundred or 750000 on Spezza and have him play this lesser role, I don't know if it makes sense. And yet, so, um, the rumors are flying. There's a lot of things going on in Toronto. Um, William Nylander is trending on cap friendly. Everyone's looking at his contract and how friendly it is to trade. Um, I think he's owed $20 million over the next five years, which is roughly four to four and a half million dollars. I think there's just over 20 million, so. I think he's in real money. He's owed four to four and a half million dollars for the next four or five seasons, and uh, his cap hit is six point nine. So um, he's definitely bang for the buck uh, at, at thirty one goals this year, and everyone's looking to trade him out. And again, you complain about no leadership, soft. 
these the wingers stay to the outside and they're floaters and this and that and that and that. And then you want to trade William Nylander, who's the only puck cycling right winger on the team that can hold on to the puck and cycle it. But Mitch Marner is fine. Mitch Marner is the poster boy for everything that you complain about. Softness, floater, stays to the outside, doesn't get to the inside. He, you know, he lacks grit, leadership, all these things. He is the poster boy. And he's getting paid almost $11 million. So if, if anything, Marner's the guy that has to go. Not Nylander, not Kapanen. These guys... You know, they score in the playoffs and they do what they have to do. But, yeah. So, in terms of the rumors, there's a lot. Goaltending, defense, uh, trades. I definitely believe that we're going to see some moves regarding Janssen, Kapanen, uh, with guys like... Don't forget, the Leafs signed um, Lettinen, um who was defensive, defenseman of the year. Um, so they do actually have four defensemen with uh, Sandine, Lilligren, and Rosen still in the group. That makes seven with Marins, and that's eight. But they do have to go get some... If Lettinen actually can play the right side, which they say he can, and he plays with Riley, and you already have Muzzin and Hall as your shutdown pair, then you just need to fill out the bottom three guys, five, six, and seven. And honestly, if Sandine and Lilligren are not good enough and you have to play Marinson, then you trade those guys. You trade Sandine, Dermot. Dermot's another guy whose contract is up. He's an RFA this summer. And he hasn't done enough. Um, if he wants to resign in Toronto, he's going to get squeezed. And he's going to get squeezed and they're going to offer him something starting with a one. And Hall got $2 million. It's real disrespectful, but you haven't done anything. You've gotten all these opportunities with injuries to step up and play a bigger role and do better things. And I had high hopes for Dermot. But at this point, you know, he gets injured or, sorry, there's an injury in, in, in Muzzin. And uh, Marinson is the guy who steps in, not Sandy, not Lilligren, and not Rosen. So at that point, if those guys are not good enough to play and you're a perennial playoff team looking to become a contender, then you have to go trade those young guys and get assets back that can play. You cannot put Marinson in in a moment where it's do or die because he's going to throw pizzas up the middle and that's what he does. Um, I personally hope I never see Marinson play another game for the Maple Leafs, to be honest with you. Because if he does, it means we lack depth and we didn't make the right moves and the Leafs are going to be poorer defensively because of it. Not because I, I, I don't like the guy. The guy's a perfectly nice guy, but I'm just speaking overall for the success that I want to see for the Leafs. If they put a Marinson... In the lineup, that just means they don't have depth. They don't have better prospects. You know, he's the last resort. So it is what it is. Um, so, yeah. Um, rumors. Coaching rumors. Goalie rumors. Defenseman rumors. Um, trading wingers. You know, there's no contracts to talk about. So there's going to be plenty of rumors this summer. But um, if you've noticed, since Lou came in, and even with Dubis, um, the Leafs are pretty tight-lipped. They don't leak anything out. If the player or the agent doesn't leak anything out, um, the Leafs themselves are not the Leafs of old before Lou came in with Brian Burke and Nonis and those guys. And those guys were constantly leak things. So um, rumors are mostly just made up at this point. Um, there's actually a new one that says uh, Elliot Friedman uh, um, said that the Leafs are pretty much 100% going to sign or 90% going to sign Joe Thornton to a one-year, $1 million deal. That would be interesting. That would mean a couple of things. 
if the Leafs are dead set on signing someone like Joel Thornton, who's going to be your third line winger or your fourth line winger to play with Spezza, God forbid that should happen. It, it means that they're looking to move guys. They might move that entire third line, uh, Janssen, Kapanen, and Kerfoot. And that's that's interesting. Um, so Elliot Friedman is one of those guys I trust. Him and Pierre Lebrun are the two guys I trust the most. They they don't talk out of the both sides of their mouths like the way Dreger and McKenzie do. Um, they're more trustworthy. So when he says, you know, the Leafs are looking to sign this guy at one million that that's that's really interesting uh, i don't know they, they, i doubt they would put joe thornton on the wing um they would most probably use him as a third or fourth line center so that means um big moves are coming um the leafs are not going to touch the top six i'm telling you that right now the leafs will not trade any players from their top six forward group. Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, Marner, Hyman. These guys, five guys. These five guys are not going anywhere. People love to create rumors about Nylander and stuff like that. Those guys are not going anywhere. The Leafs are going to live and die with those guys for as long as Dubas is around. They're going to live and die with those guys. So they're going to keep augmenting their bottom six and the bottom of their defense until they get it right. And that's, I believe that's what you got to do. Because you see people like TSN and Sportsnet talking about Toronto's cup window. It's open, it's closing, blah, blah, blah. Tavares and Hedman have been together for 11 years. And if you include Kucherov, those three have been together for seven years. No playoff success. But I don't see Bob McKenzie coming on saying, these guys are all 30 years old. Their cup window's closed. No, they don't. They're perennial cup contenders. Meanwhile, Stamkos, Hedman, and Kucherov haven't experienced any kind of uh, success in the playoffs. These guys haven't done shit. But that's the bias, right? In Toronto, it's all doom and gloom all the time, but Tampa Bay is the best team. Tampa Bay hasn't done shit. Tampa Bay, 11... Matthews and Tavares have been together for two seasons, and it's already time to blow it up. Hedman and, and Stamkos have been together for 11 years, and, and if you include Kucherov, they've been together for seven years. Of that three. But Matthews and Tavares only get two seasons. And, you know, it's time to blow it up. These guys can't win. They got no leadership. They lack everything. It's unbelievable, the stuff that you hear in this town. It's It makes zero sense. Sometimes. Leafs lose. They lack leadership. Obviously, they got appointed. The one thing you can actually measure is not tangible. But Pittsburgh loses. They have tons of leadership. Tampa last year got swept by Columbus. Swept. People said all sorts of stuff about Tampa. Well, if Stamkos and Hedman have been together for 11 years and they got swept by Columbus in the first round after those 11 years, isn't it time to blow it up? Isn't it time for them to do something different? Obviously, you can't win with those guys. Those guys are losers. No, in Tampa, you can't trade away talent. Who are you going to trade Hedman to? Well, no matter what the return is, it's never going to be great. Look at Phil Kessel. We traded this guy and took $2 million of his contract. And the guy went off to win two, two Stanley Cups. He's in... He's in uh, Arizona, he's scoring a bunch of goals. And what did we get for him? Kapanen? What did we get out of that trade? Nothing. You can't trade superstars because the return is never going to be equal. So you're going you're gonna to have to stick with them 
And like the way Washington did with Ovechkin and, and Nick Backstrom for 14 years, it took them that long to figure it out, 14 years. Ovechkin finally said, okay, I understand what we have to do to win. And then he fixed it, and then they won. Imagine if Washington would have blown it up as fast as Toronto wants to blow everything up. Ovechkin would have been traded three times already. Stamkos and Hedman would have been traded three times already. 11 years. You think, you think if Matthews and Tavares are together for 11 years and their playoff record looks like Tampa's, that this town won't lynch them? That's, it doesn't make any sense. Every year is different. Every year the circumstances are different. The teams you play in, the, the playoffs are different. There's a pandemic. There's a four-month break. Every season, the situation is different. You can't just say, oh, because they didn't win, they don't have any leadership, this, that, that. It, that's not how it works. Everybody keeps heaping 50 years of disappointment on these players. Tavares just got here. It's not his fault that the Leafs haven't done anything since 1967. It's not. But let's put all that weight on him and let's see how he performs. He's going to do great. Anyways, on to bigger and better positive news. The Raptors are doing great. Um, they didn't play too well in the game two, but they found a way to pull it out. And that's what depth and experience and talent does. Raptors have a lot of depth. Their bench is really good. And guys like Norm Powell and Fred Van Vliet are stepping up on nights where um, um, guys like Lowry and Siakam and Gasol are struggling. So you got to have a bunch of guys uh, to do what they do. They play great defense and defense wins championships. Leafs. So we're looking for another repeat this year. Toronto Raptors, let's go, boys. See you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in.